last series, the coaching staff plus the players, they felt like they had the solution, but the execution wasn't there. Yeah, and now we're going for a slightly different option. Now, Ash was hugely dominant early into spring. It's still very good into the Callista, but you yes. were looking. I think Top Esports were looking for the Ash Varus bot lane, and Elkanon say, no, you are not having both of them. We're going to take the Callista and the Varus. One of them going to support more Let's likely than go. not. Shakulov goes for the Draven. We finally get it. You know this is when Jackie Love knows it's serious. He needs to find that carry performance. He's going to go back to one of his classics. But my goodness, if we wouldn't want more focus on bot lane, there's 480 carries down there oh, now if Kalista's going to join. All pressure onto the TV2. If it wasn't enough already, this right. time it feels like these are two, you know, fangs bad bot lanes. I think the Vi is going to be very important after we get ourselves towards the first clear. Level three Vi on bot side, very, very strong. I think, what are you looking to ban now from um, BLG? Stuff that impacts bot lane very early. The Poppy's one of those things. You're thinking uh, Shin Sao, Lee Sin. Um, a couple of these picks which you just get towards that level three clear and head bot side. I like the focus from top esports on the blue side, taking away some of those roaming mids from Knight, where we've seen him actually take a pretty big resurgence in those here, moving out to the side lanes, moving into those jungle invades, and try to take away some of those tools away from the mid laner of BLG. And one thing which I'm worried about now, Tiana's had a pretty bad series so far. He's struggled, and um, need we say it, Tiana's been struggling in finals before, something you were talking in the break about. Now he's getting hit in champion pool as well. He needs to step oh, up goodness. here. These are the two picks from the jungle pool we thought would get removed. Tiana is going to have to dig deep if he wants to mount a mount comeback. He's got to have something that can fight Shun as well. I, I think Shun might be one of the best buys in our league. Very much uh, so. And I'm really looking forward to how he can take down these two bot laners who are going to be squishy. But that is where the rest of top esports comes to a head. That's where a reverse sweep for some of the most experienced players in our league has to start with this game. And these last two picks are going to be super crucial in that. We get the TF ban finally against Ben. I wonder whether we get the Orianna coming out of Knight, though. It's a nasty combo, and there are a lot of squishies you can punish with that. Orianna does more than fine into the Azir in the laning phase. It's something which BLG played against Top Esports in their first game of the last time they matched up. That'll be pretty strong. I can lock in there and can save that last pick for the top lane. Soft 369 getting an advantage on the same one. Oh, oh even really? Okay, right, right, okay. Oh, baby, okay. let's go! So it's not going to be the Shockwave, but we get ourselves a massive ult all the same. Look at that smile on Knight. He is so Look happy at him. this one. It's the Star Forger in the mid lane. Aurelian Soul for BLG looking to close out the series. Looking to descend the skies on to top esports. They have so much scaling now as well with that pick alone to pair up with the Varus and Callista early game fighting. It is the Rek'Sai for 369, a classic choice. And we'll see what the answer is from Vin with his counter pick, unless it's been the Callista the whole time. You need some kind of engage. Now, question, what was that going to be? It's going to be AoE team fight. It's the Rel. It does have a strong level three. You can get right on top of both those 80 carries, but it's not necessarily the easiest champion to pilot if you do miss that engage. Rumble would be a big pick to set up the team fights here. Also, both these top laners undefeated on the pick and sprint. Is, and it has been such a big, big pick into the Rek'Sai in particular, because the Rek'Sai has been so obnoxious as this Bruiser regen tank. You don't get to do that versus the Rumble. You can go towards an early nullifying orb and just keep burning them down. We even saw Shanji go towards Conqueror and build like yeah. Ranjuins, go half tank in <laughs> the Rumble as well. Lots of options here, but BLG, they have themselves once again huge, pushing early lanes. It has been met in part by top esports, particularly with this bot lane, but I'm worried about what's going to happen with you know this vibe if they can get in towards this bot side. BLG bot side 3v3s have been what have put them into this position as favorites of LPL. Elk and On have taken two stalwart names in the LPL, two games in a row. Jackie Love and Mako have not been the difference maker in top esports just yet, even though they have in the past. I think this draft is going to be a lot on execution for top esports here. And it's a lot about what that early game pathing from Tian is going to look like. You know what? If there's any team, any team in the LPL which you trust with aggressive team compositions and the execution of it, it's BLG. It's Billy Billy Gaming. They've done it the entire split and they've taken it to the very best teams in our league. They have earned their position in this finals. They are on the precipice of earning themselves a title. For BLG, this is the second final. A year ago from this split, they were taken down 3-1 by their nightmare in JDG. They went on to lose seven best ups against that squad 369, the only one from that JDG roster on the other side for Top Esports. For Top Esports, it feels like it's been years since we've seen them at this mountaintop, but here they are again. Backs against the wall. Reverse sweep needed. Who else but Mako, Jackie Love, Tien, and 369 could do it? 
it's going to rely on this Draven for Jackie Love. It's going to rely on the mobility and the information gained by Mako. But I'm looking at how fast Tien and Shun go bot side. Trying to give some energy to make sure we don't go to 3-0 in Chengdu, but uh, TES looking for a level I, one. I love what Knight's doing here. He's actually using that um, that that uh, Breath of Light to um, make sure that he could proc a Comet on someone in the bush. He could get him to use that. <laughs> but, what, but what that would do is give vision, because he doesn't have a ward over the wall. But if you fire that Q over, maybe you spot someone. Intelligent stuff. Bot side. It's a 3v3 before we've hit one minute into the game. Yo, they're bringing Knight down to the bot side against this. Oh my goodness. So, both games so far, first bloods have gone down bot side. Mako gonna burn his flash early and BLG respond with a level one strat. Oh my gosh, this is such bad news for top esports. They they went to, they, they were bold. They said, look, we'll drop in Jackie Loves Draven. You know, he was the Draven streamer before he joined Invictus Gaming and went towards the World Championship. This is his champion. Uh, Mako on the Ash as well, putting that in towards that lane pairing, but honestly, Elk and On and the rest of the team setting them up have been so devastating early into the game, and this is no different. The very first game of the split these two played, it was Elk and On on this duo of the Callista and the, the Varus being so, so deadly and pushing in for 3v3s, and it's starting in a horrific way for top esports here in what could be their last game. An early level two will be there for Elk and On, so they'll have presence and pressure in the lane. But that is where we take a look. Now that Tien is on his way down, he will be on vision. So Mako went back to base, reach end up, has no summoners. They know that Tien's here. They are trying to play as though... The, the thing is, now it's kind of like it's Oscar's night a little bit, right? Because you're sat here <laughs> thinking, okay, well, we've got to act well enough to make sure that they don't know that we know. Hmm. They back off and they do... You don't know that, that I know, that you know, that I know. Look, it's, a, it's a whole thing, you know? Ah. We'll, it's, it's a whole thing, information warfare, all of that. But Tien is going to be on bot side. You can see that now Elkanon are playing a bit more... Um, respectfully, as Tien gets a buff steal away. So they are going to go for the invade here. I want to talk a little bit of how these uh, skirmishes can lead out to victories. Oh, it's Shun that gets it, I believe. No, it actually is Tien. They're going to get the flash from on. They're moving out, and they're moving in. That's Shun with first blood for BLG. BLG strike hard, and they strike fast. This team has been so deadly around early game and around the bot site, and oh, Tien no. has not been prepared for it. Now, they ball lane's left alone. They can't get out of it. Okay, they're going to pull off. I thought maybe they had an angle. Honestly, BLG had an angle there, but they aren't going to go for it. Maybe lacking a little bit of that information against a big wave crash from Mako and Jackie Love. Oh, poor Tien, though. This player, when he won that lower bracket finals, he broke down in tears thinking, you know what, I finally made it back to that final stage. He's had a poor record on the final stage, and sadly here for him today, he has been targeted hard by BLG. They have responded yeah. well to this player, who historically has been the, the thinking man's jungler yeah. in the LPL. He was the early path. He's come down towards bot side again, but you know, this was the, just kind of returning to the scene of the crime, which he kind of committed, went too far. And Tien has been a staple, at least the top esports here in recency, obviously since his time on FPX, winning a world championship. Uh, but as you said, he's one in four in finals. I'm uh, looking to try to add to that to some extent. As uh, I, I do wonder though, because Shun is having a lot of confidence, that enables his play so well, and it's enabling BLG. You can't play like this unless you have a team set up for it. That's yeah. the big thing. If you're going to take away anything away from this series, you cannot play like BLG unless your bot lane and your jungler are on the same page at the same time. Of course, Knight even roamed out of mid lane yeah. as well. This team is a well-oiled machine at making sure these level three, level four fights work out in their favor. And top esports have been losing out on them. So let's talk a little bit about the way that they can approach this one. Jackie Love and Mako trying to get the kill on bot side. Can he cash in? One more, and there he goes. He gets the cash in there, but Elk wants to chase him down. Gets one right back for him. And now it's Supportal Combat versus an actual ADC. Both of them will back away. We got four Halo Blades in that bot side. And that's how much early damage comes through. It's something. It's a kill. It's nice. Problem is, you know, Jackie Love did die early on, of course, which means that... Um, he doesn't have himself the full duration at the full amount of those stacks. Tien now going towards top side, but I don't think he can really force anything else beyond that point. The early fighting just continues. Just right behind the play was Tien. Now we get a little bit of time. We have the Rallying Soul for scaling aspect for BLG, but they definitely have a lot of early game onus on them, whereas Tien on the other side, they have that as well. 
They do. I mean, we've seen the early game um, tools being put to bear. What, should we, what are we going to get the replay? Of course, it's the team. <laughs> well. I was like, okay, what are we going towards this time? There's too much. It's, you know, folks, you have four Halo Blades in this bot side. The damage comes out in such a quick amount. Then, yeah, it's very easy to give up kills, even if you have been winning just beforehand. It goes into a one for one, though. Kill goes over towards Elk. And now it uh, looks like two grubs are taken by Top Esports on that top side, not the full three taken. Bin going to deny that one there. He moved in to try to pressure TN on that side of the map there. We also have still some push going on that side. Shoot. We found Tian knowing that he was on this side of the map. He takes the skirmish, does push him out, so they will secure that one scut or at least a uh, grubby for themselves. So that cream, uh, a little bit of CS in that oh, mid lane. Didn't go for it. Uh, not just yet. He's uh, well. What he ends up doing is um, pushing in towards the enemy jungle and forcing Tian back. He'll be able to get it if he wants to at that same point. We may as well take those extra. Ooh, the slowdown. The slowdown's so big. On can't get away from this one. In one auto, Jackie Love comes up big. He is now two and one. Oh my gosh, this bot lane are not ready to give up, and it's suddenly again the Halo Blades. It can catch you off guard. It definitely caught on off guard a couple of times now. The damage is so quick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So close. His elf just getting some poke damage. Denies may go from taking that uh, vision warm, but in the end he'll get it anyways. But this is the kind of game you want to see from this veteran bot lane that we finally get from Top Esports. Oh yeah, from Jackalove and Mako. You know, this is the bot lane that people were excited for coming into this split because Mako finally left EDG, joined Jackalove. This is the best support he's ever had. And, you know, Mako is one of the best supports we've ever seen. Now, it has been a difficult series for them so far, but at the brink, backs against the wall, Jackalov on his Draven. What a legendary champion and a legendary player of it that has been. Gives Top Esports a platform, at least. And we have to uh, applaud Jackie Love. I feel like he has been the strongest ADC over this last year, even with Ruler having so many pop-offs in 2023. Consistently, even with some of those mess-ups in late-game finals, it is <laughs> Jackie Love who comes up clutch every time. I think that Jackie Love has been such a big point of this. Jungler is fighting over the spot side. Scuttle Dragon not taken early just yet. We've been too focused on fighting. It's about killing those champions rather than dragons. We have ourselves Cream this time. It's in mid lane prior. Definitely helps him fight towards um, that boss side of the map. A little wet noodle fight in top side. No big deal. We uh, check on those noodles later when they're al dente. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I gotta laugh. <laughs> so you okay, you get them. one. You okay, go well, everybody well. gets one. That's what Spider Man says. Uh, three, six, nine, though. Does have the healing back once he goes into the burrow, which well, should be just fine. Trading going back and forth. Yeah, but I'm really interested to see what's going to happen when these top laners come into the uh, the party as well. Typically, these teams don't focus on top side, despite the name value up there. We've just seen so much value out of playing towards bot side three. Oh yeah. When it comes through to those team fights, that's when the top laners really come to party. Eight minute essence reaver for Jackie Love. The time is now. Absolutely, this Draven could be the difference maker. Dragon started up by BLG. What have we got? We don't have the Ashult. That's a big tool missing for Top Esports. No XP really on makeup. Looks like with the Ren stacked up, BLG should be able to take this one for free. Tian, can you realistically steal this? This is a risk. Ah, it looks like he's not even going to go for it there. The Ren too big to contest. BLG take their first Dragon. They will make it out of there. We're getting to a point where time is going to be of essence for Top Esports. So, BLG. Cap themselves again, some scaling advantage if they wanted as well. See, Tian's actually gonna get spotted out by Knight. Knight's only a half HP, can't realistically take a hard trade, but at least spotting him out. It's a big thing against Yan. Such a force of nature for Top Esports in their wins. He's been tracked a lot, he's been held down a lot with Knight spotting him out and stuff like that. Just again, yeah. stops him from being the difference maker which Top Esports need. And soon, also, uh, oh no. <laughs> I love the observers. Come to? The observers are zooming in on the cannon. I love that. Uh, but it has really been a, a good series of play from Shun that has denied one of the best junglers in our league from a lot of these angles he's been looking for. Now we're looking at a top lane gank that Bin just dissuades because he has so much heat. Yeah, he just uses that equalizer to clear out that wave, clears out the wave, takes a good uh, good trade, and means that Tian is kind of spotted out first by Knight, then warded off by Bin. Now you need to be careful of the cross map on bot side. You do have the level 6 coming in from Shun. This is very dangerous because you can go Vile into Varasol into Death. You need to be so careful here, Top. Enchanted Crystal Arrow is not available. There's a two level difference between Mako and Jackie Love. He's going to use the Whirling Death to try to get the wave there. There's a cease and desist onto Jackie Love. They know who they need, and they get him with a piercing arrow straight through the heart. And even though no the way. 2v2's no won, way. we're going to get him! The Fates call in! One more auto! It's another piercing arrow, and BLG come away ace!
forces on bot side. We thought that maybe bot lane, they'd have the vacation, they'd have the pressure off them. It never ends. Level six by the Vi. We saw this Vi cut being locked in. We said, look, this is going to be dangerous later into the game. That time's happened now. It's 10 minutes on the clock. Shun, more than happy to run towards bot side. And now 3 and 0 oh, Varus for Elk. This monstrous AD carry that BLG have built up over time is set to take over this game. And that's what I love the contrast between these two bot lanes. We have Jackie Love and Mako, some of the most known names. And we'll get back to that conversation just again. trying to get on a top side gank. Ben's just going to burn his flash there. Does get the Shattering Strike there on the back end. Magnus Storm 2, the knock up there from 369. Is he going to be able to make it out? He does still have his health bar. The overheat's coming up. They want to dive for this one, but he's turning it around. They go under turret, and the juggle is complete. Top Esports with a little bit of an act of their own. It's something in top side at least. It takes a flash from 369, but bot side is potentially going to be the answer again. Here comes Shun. Yeah, he's going over the wall. Does not hit the vault breaker there. Mako trying to burn something in the pit here to get some help from Jackie Love on the other side, but just going to give a kill over to Elk. And it's a clean kill on bot side. You know, top esports, they show on top side. Tien goes towards top, then there's a dive on bot side. He gets the gank on top side, and then bot lane continues fighting. Feels like that both sides of the map are just falling into more difficult situations. 4-0 for Elk, one of the mainstays of BLG, but also a big stark contrast to what Jackie Love and Mako have done. They are so good solo that when they came together, it looked so damn strong, but it's on and Elk when they came together that their individuality didn't really play but their togetherness has really made, paid dividends. And think about BLG as a roster, you know, you have been, you've got Knight as your solo liners. Like, they should be in so many different worlds. You think this will be the, play, the players that you're focusing on. And don't worry, we focus on them a lot as well. <laughs> but, but in this playoffs, I think particularly, it has been about these names which have become big names through BLG. I think Elk, I think On as a duo, they have really stepped up to the plate to be worthy of this team. And I think the biggest thing is the three names that we feel like have stepped up a, a lot in this one, Shun, Elk, and On. They have never won a championship. Oh. This would be the first for them, and they have such a strong performance to kick it off. They have, and, you know, of course, that job's not done. Gold's even. Job's not done. Now, the thing is, a lot of that gold is on bot side right now for um, this virus. And the Pope virus in this game, I think, is going to have a great job here. I mean, you're not against the tanker's ear, so it's another kind of squishy target you can hit. You've got three squishies on the bot side of the map, which you can really... Uh, do well against you know, the Rek'Sai's itemizing towards magic damage as well. I really feel like Elk on this Pope Varus could end up being a difference maker yet again. It's going to have to be. We have those first items for everyone. I know it's been, been about four minutes for Jackie Love. So a potential 3v2 in bot side. I was wondering about what could happen there. Of course, the thing is, if you go into the Varus, you have the Callista on the <laughs> It's a very difficult thing playing as the Callista support as well, because it's one thing pulling a support out to safety. It's another thing having like an instant Thresh Lantern yeah. on the other side of it, which makes you untargetable from a Callista support, saving your AD carry. BLG, and not easy to get a hold of here. Tien has been waiting like a predator in the wild trying to take down a big egg. They weigh a thousand he pounds. He knows it. He they just know that, that he's there. And he has to pull out that means elk and on are safe. And Tian just wasted so much time. It's like when uh, you, you, you're, you're hunting that elk and you step on a twig and suddenly the head snaps up, the ears <laughs> perk up, and they run back into the distance, into the forest, and right there. They know. They do it again. I, look, folks, uh, not only are these players great players of League of Legends, they're pretty good at acting too. They can tell you so. that they can make you believe that they don't know you're in that brush and that they did all the same. Elk on. They have taken so much of Tian's time here. He's been waiting to find a game breaking play. It's not going to be easy. And now Shun's on bot side. But that's the thing about these bot lanes, the 2v2 ADCs are important to keep getting resources to. And now the Enchanted Crystal Arrow lands on Elk. He's going to use the Fates Call to get right out of that one. And that's all she wrote about the end gate. But now we have Dragon up and ready to go. I think with that easy cholesterol kind of being pulled out, and then also the Varus, I think BLG maybe give up this Dragon now. See if Shun has anything to say to it, though. There is a Vi ultimate. He's had the better of Tien so far, at least, and other members have had the better of the objectives. He's in there. No, he's not going to get it. He's not going to use that Vault Breaker for it. Elk and on. In a little bit of trouble. Magnusorp. Oh, they found the Cease and Assist. That's the Sky's Descent as well. Jackie Love still alive. Going to pop that Whirling Death. And now it's Shun who has the Flash. There's the Equalizer in. Ben on the wrong side of the fight, but maybe they will turn back around. Here comes that Breath of Light. And the Breath is cooking top eSports. It's about to be a full-on ace. Oh, my goodness. It is Bin and the rest of BLG that make the difference. BLG are fire. BLG are death around the dragon. Their solo lane has finally entered the equation as well. Big ultimates from them. Me and that top East cannot rearrange the fight in their favor. 
That's a huge moment, an absolutely huge moment. You can see that before this. Again, the ultimates from the bot lane are down. That means that they're not the heroes of this play. And you rightfully think it's top eSports. You can look for a big one, but Cream shuffles forward. He has no mobility now. He can't get out of the play. Jackalup gets absolutely CC'd to death. There is nothing he can do as well. BLG fight back so, so well. Normally, I wouldn't want a non-tank character teleporting into five <laughs> people, but if it's been, I guess we'll allow it. Hey, he gets the pass 10 times out of 10. I think through all this, I have to continue to highlight Elk. This man is 6-0. He's had a hell of a journey to get to this point. He has been in the league since 2018, and now we get a fight here over on all by himself, and he'll go down. It's something back for Top Esports. The thing is, though, it feels like a bit of a consolation prize at this point. They've gotten themselves, you know, a couple of odd kills here and there, but it hasn't been decisive. You know, they've gotten themselves the Dragon. That's good. That's a genuine win for them. If they get themselves the Herald, that's big too. In game one, we had Top Esports hitting 9,000 kills as a historical organization within LPL. We have a lot of milestones here today. Yeah, 8,000 now hit by BLG. As Only their second finals as an organization would be their first victory. As the side lane turret goes down to Bin, it is the Rift Herald that was secured by Top Esports. So we'll look where they want to deliver that goal. So 369. He doesn't really even feel like he wants to walk up towards Bin. Bin has um, not felt the need to go towards an early nullifying orb. Says, look, I'm pushing in the wave anyway. I'm not looking mm -hmm. for solo kills. I want the quickest Leandris possible to get that there. See that Knight on the other side. BLG very aware of how to play their side lines. Instant ult there, meaning that Knight just clears out the wave. He's fine to go elsewhere after that point. And BLG find themselves safe again. Important thing to know about this game, folks. BLG last game won in 23 minutes with a scaling composition. They have scaling again. The Rumble is going to be fantastic in team fight against the backline. Of course, they're the Aurelian Sol as well. They ha don't need to win all of these fights, right? They're just wave clear. On, actually getting a nice engage from Tien. There's the Enchant Crystal Arrow. He does not have any tools to get out, and that's another death to On. Okay, there's a couple of ults put in towards that. It's nice goal over. I am wondering whether you're just kind of getting that pick just onto the support is enough for them right now. Mm. Though. Again, it's odd kills, but it's not necessarily turning the game. And killing a support is good. It means that you take away some wards, but it's not necessarily the game-changing play that you want. 369 caught out just a little bit. Oh, committed. they're bringing over Elk as well. Equalizer from Ben across the top. He gets denied. He's going to have to burn the flash out there. Love on the other side gets Chains of Corruption, and the engage is coming through. Look at Ben. He's going to flash with the Flame Spinner. Jackie Love got to get out of there, bud. 369 is all by himself. One hail of arrows doesn't do it. Nobody's going to go down as BLG. Ben takes an extra tower shot. He goes down now as well. Now Tien back from the grave and back ready to fight for top esports. Shun gonna go down too with a chash in of Jackie Love. There's your decisive victory. It's kind of handed to them a little bit and overdive by BLG, but this is what top esports need. They need themselves that injection of cash. The Draven passive brings them pretty much even in gold after that points. That's finally something more of what they needed, rather than the odd kills. That's definitely going to be a second item spike for Jackie Love as well, even though Elk is already on that. It's important that this Draven gets any resources possible, because he is that bridge damage over to Cream. We did get that uh, Leandri second item completed for Night now. We get the engage on mid lane. Look how much damage he does. Fate's Call use. Oh, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow across the map. The snipe comes down, and another one goes over to top. Top Esports, again, not ready to roll over. They're 0-2 down, but they do not want to see things end here. I think BLG, they've um, kind of lost control a little bit. They've fallen asleep a little bit at the wheel, and Top Esports are punishing them. You cannot afford to do that against opponents the level of Top Esports. Dragon's up in 30 seconds. I would imagine that Top Esports will get that. They get themselves two turrets in one fell swoop. This is a massive phase of play. In the last few minutes, Top Esports mid-game macro has been something they have beaten BLG with before. And it's some of the best mid-game macro that we have in the league. It has been incredible to watch the quick decision-making that Top Esports has had 15 to 20 minutes in. And we see that here in the little fights. But the biggest thing is continuing that momentum forward. Is, and now with the dragon spawning, BLG, realistically, can you fight this? I wouldn't put it to them. I think when you're walking into a Draven with this much uh, gold in his hands, it wouldn't be uh, advised at that point. To teleport in from 369, BLG, they're kind of spectating. Can they catch someone out on the retreats? Oh, they might actually have an angle here. It does look like things are going to calm down a little bit there in the end, but the dragon was already secured. Now they'll move in. BLG, they're looking for They have the Sky's Descent, so they're really looking for a fight right now. And they're also looking to just cut off easy access towards this mid lane. It's going to be a mid lane outer turret falling. That's a big thing. BLG, we talk about how when they take these outer turrets, they just run run over the map. 
It's going to be that mid lane turret falling just now. <laughs> it's a big moment. Shouldn't take in a couple of turret <laughs> shots. You know, no big deal. Make the minions feel better about really themselves. Really just felt like 1v1ing a building. <laughs> ben tried to do that last time, and he got killed. So. Yeah, he did. He did. Occasionally that happens. Um, folks, leave that to the architects. <laughs> ah, I see. I see. Now we have Baron on the table. This is something top esports can play around. This is same damage. Not necessarily there, but they have the damage profile. Collector completed for Jackie Love. We'll see topside. Uh, ben is caught out here. There's no one coming to respond to this. Knight could teleport, but I think Ben's just out of position. Yeah, he's completely out of position. This has been in trouble before, and he's all by himself at a 1v4. As Tian comes over with a Shattering Strike, 369 pays up. Honestly, Top Esports, real credit to them here for just getting these pick after pick after pick. And now with Ben dead for 30 seconds, they can get themselves a Baron start, force BLG to come into that. We've seen this before. Sky's Descent available. BLG moving in to pressure Top Esports under the Baron's ire. He's in the pit here now. Tian needs to make it happen. He's a world champion oh, for a reason. They're going to go for the engage. They got Knight, and the Sky's Descent will come down in the end. Shun's in the pit, but it's way too early. He's going to go in on the Jackie Love. They actually take down Tian, and now they get the double knock back there. Shun can't get any more damage down, though. And that's a TP, 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 TP. They're going to move out this time, as that's a big flame spitter waiting to come down. He's getting immediately chunked, and maybe we take back his pass to being able to TP into 1v5. On has that Fates call oh, used. Oh, Jackie! Jackie Love dies to the Baron! No! He misses the piercing arrow there, as now they're moving forward. They get the Void Rush, and there it is! 369, baby! Rolling all nines! And he gets himself the thousand gold shutdown. I wonder how many shutdowns he needs to get to add like a 12 onto his name or something. Top Esports around the Baron. Again, show that BLG cannot afford the disrespect. Their long range Ash Arrows. I really think it's Mako. He's making a lot of the difference here against BLG, pick after pick, has left BLG scra scrambling. I think they kind of fell asleep a little bit. They were so in control of this game. Wow. Fantastic play, arrow out of Fog of War. Knight goes down, yes, he gets the ultimate. And the double knock uh, from, from Shun back into it means that the damage is still pretty good. But still, the fact that the Assault does not get to play this fight is a big amount of damage missing. Mako using that piece of terrain to block the Enchanted Crystal Arrow uh, sight line there and an incredible moment where Knight was ready to put them down into Pound Town. And uh, it's really top esports showing a lot of grit here. And uh, the Baron getting involved with things as well, seriously though. <laughs> we haven't had a lot of chance to talk about Cream in the mid lane as well. He walks away with a triple kill. You know, it was Azir in game one. I think a lot of people walk away with that and say, oh, he didn't hit the engages, whatever. I think that was on BLG. This game though, I really does feel like Cream He's uh, not allowing BLG that same ability to outplay him. He wants yeah. to take things into his own hands. Five and two, Zonya's completed. That stasis will be very important. And again, this is the farthest that Cream has ever made it. He was the OMG prodigy. He was the guy that was dragging OMG's dead body across the finish line so many years ago. And his first split on another team, his first split on top esports, he's in the finals. And, uh, he's also become, you know, he, he was the Akali guy, he was the Silas guy. Uh, he played a lot of these melees, he was a Yone player. He wasn't really a mage player. Uh, however, in this split, he was put on he was put on Azir duty. He did some great work on stuff like Karma and Quay as well. Azir in this game at least has been um, a heck of a string to put on his bow. Top Esports now, getting vision control. Sat on pink wards, trying to force BLG to once again disrespect the Ash Arrow. They really want to get a play with Mako. They're going to force the hand of BLG once again. This is just a play that they can continue returning to. It's like a well. You just drop the bucket down and you come up big. How much water does this one hold, though? BLG, they are still pretty much even in gold. They have themselves some big ultimates. Usually. They don't have the big Aurelian Soul ultimate, though. So that's important to know. Top Esports, it's been working for now. You cannot just expect this to work for forever, though. Your setup still has to be clean. I would expect that with that back... Okay, Jackie Love didn't actually complete the full item. Uh, differential in that third item yet, but he's getting to that point. Elk on the other side has completed his third item. And uh, that's going to be really important. That Edge of Night means you can't just ping him on with a skill shot uh, for free. That Ash Arrow can't be the, uh, the primary target onto him. You need to use something first. Now, Dragon spawning in 10 seconds. It will be sold point for top esports. And uh, done a good job of kind of winning over the objectives this time around. Zir turret down in mid lane. Vision control established on bot side for top esports. They'll be looking towards a quick Dragon take and then go back towards the Baron. I don't think BLG can contest on the Dragon. So it means that they'll have to let that one go for free. And in the last series, these games were decided by 15, 20 minutes every time this series has been much different we had a very very close game number one game number two not so much now DS 
Trying to start this reverse sweep, but the name gauge from 369, they won't find anything there. They don't burn any spells, but they do have presence on the map. You see, though, the angle from 369 potentially could have been a flash knockup over a wall. You see that BLG, they have to be so careful of side lanes now as well. In the previous games, their side laning has been fantastic, but yeah. they've been picked off this game. Top Esports, their macro has been one of the defining factors about this team. They move to round areas of the maps very well. You can see that BLG, they have to keep poking their heads into this barrel and say, are you starting it? Do we have to contest? Are they looking for a fight? They are looking for a fight. They're going to cease and desist right over on a 369. He's tanky, but he ain't that tanky. There's the engage from Tien, a flash out from Elk. The equalizer coming in from Finn. The Breath of Light trying to dissuade any more engage. Mako's almost dead, but On's getting chased down now by Jackie Love. He's going to try to use his leaps, but there's the flash. There's Oh, he auto attacked the ward. Okay, he finally gets the cash in there. Stop Esports will take down one of the damage dealers, the BLG. Uh, and they also get a lot of flashes for that too. That's big. Elk, no flash. Bin, no flash. And Jackie Love with another kill. This Draven, again, legendary in his reputation, starting to be a huge threat if you're not landing that equalizer directly onto his head and pinning him there. Feels like really top esports, fantastic vision control, fantastic pick play, and they keep going back towards the Baron. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The well is there for a reason. You're always going to pull up water unless you're in a drought. Now if they see if top esports is in drought or in full spring water. They are 5,000 away from burning down this one. It looks like we might flip it soon. Not going to go in the pit just yet. Not going to be denied. Oh, he does get denied. Cream, the man with the difference, has that engage, has that denial from BLG. And now it's top esports moving in like the predators to the prey. The void rush comes out for 369 and gets him. And now on the back line, he is, but he's all by himself. The breath of light comes up clutch for Knight. Knight able to make the difference. And BLG somehow, some way, they're looking to take down top esports after the fight went their way. Equalizer's coming up in a few seconds. No They're going to try and snipe another kill. Sundisk coming out. He's not going to get cream. He went for Jackie Love there anyways. Oh, flash forward on. He wants it. He wants to make the difference. And he does. That's so big. Five members from Top Esports are dead. Giga Bin, Giga BLG, they take all Baron buffs with it. Top Esports fought so hard for that objective, and they're denied it not even 30 seconds after they claim it on the top side of the map. You cannot afford to think the fight is over against a team like BLG. They teleport back in, and they sweep them off the face of it. Where are we starting this? Okay, we're starting off with the, the ability to go into the pit itself. Cream uses the ult to keep Shun out of the pit, but that means the sweep is not there to stop the carries from running over the backside of this fight. If it comes to it. I think particularly with um, you know this Varasalt pinning everyone into this choke point, it means that you can't oh. have a stable front line. Cream gets tagged over and over again. And with this kill here, I mean, Asol gets to reset his W as well. The extra mobility at the end of the fight with the teleport, with the reset W, means that BLG can chase down the kills. And the desk had talked about the unsung current of this this team in night, our MVP for spring, and the golden left hand of BLG. He is the scaling carry. He is that consistent damage now for them. He's not necessarily been the main character of either of the series versus Toppies, but you can never count him out, though. His Talir in game one was absolutely absurd. And this Asol is getting to the point where there's three out of Asol. I mean, do we yeah. need to say more than that? He's stacking up a storm, and next time he has that big ultimate, which is now, uh, that could be what sees BLG through to their first title. And we have to take a look at top esports. We talked so much about it. It's literally four of the goats of our league with Cream, an up and comer from OMG. We thought so much veterancy would mean that they have the grit to take a five game series here to bring back the reverse sweep, but BLG are rebuffing them at every turn. So we're going to miss on the arrow towards the bot side. Tien gets chunked out here as well. That's the no Vials. Way. He can't get caught. Chains of corruption there. He's dead. Oh, finds him again. It is so hard to survive against the long-range nuke of BLG if you're caught out of position. And this is, again, creeping closer and closer to BLG, getting that map control, which ends games against them. This series means so much to this team. It, of course, it is first seed uh, from the LPL in terms of MSI. It's a championship as well. But for each of these players' journeys, it's such a big milestone for them. You might not know Elk from his time on Team WE. You might not even know him from his time on Ultra Prime. But you know him for his time on BLG. The man is 10, 1, and 6 in a defining game. And you have to put some respect on this guy's name. Yeah, BLG, they have done so much work making these players into superstars. 2023 was the year they went from a good team to an elite team. Now they have gone from an elite team to maybe the best damn team in the LPL. This dragon coming up now. If you solve the top esports, the fight isn't done. There is every chance they can fight their way back. They need to find this backline, make them use their tools 
the less of efficiency than they've done in their previous fights. This is a soul for top esports. BLG need to deny it. Tien on the other side of the wall, gonna take the hex gate, gonna go for the engage. He actually finds it. He has the magnet storm on tonight. Sky's descent is available, but he's locked down so heavily. Is he gonna get the pull of the trigger on? He's gonna use it to try to save his life, but he can't. That's a lot of damage back. Look at on. They are caught though. As top esports again, the fight turned right back on him. We've seen this before, Nightmare. As it's BLG who will not give up the fight so easily. On has that bait call pulled, not gonna pull Elk into it, but it's back to the dragon we go. Oh gosh. You cannot take your eyes off of any member on the back of it. These fights are not front to back. They're all over the place. Dragon's been started up. Top Esports, they're walking in blind. They have the Ren from on. They have the potential. Tian needs to make it happen. He's a world champion for a damn reason. He gets killed. He gets denied. And Top Esports, they are completely dusted. Here comes Cream. He misses the engage, but it actually gets on. Doesn't matter, though. Enchanted Crystal Arrow goes wide. Jackie Love trying to get the damage down now as well. But Flame Spitter, he tries to get the blast from Shun. That's a nice response from Jackie Love. The mechanic coming out clutch. Oh, Mako just about lives. It's not soul for Top Esports. It's not the end of the game, but it's definitely not what Top Esports wanted from that one. Tien, once again, really feels like BLG have just come down on him like a ton of bricks. Tian has not had room to maneuver. He has tried to find these clutch engages. He does get on top of Knight just before that dragon comes across, but he can't get that steal. BLG, they are once again showing why they are so hard to just execute. Finishing off these fights is so difficult. Oh, <laughs> he's, trying, he's trying to get the weaker member on that one, you know? <laughs> uh, but I think the, the, the coolest thing, and I think fans of LPL for a long time will listen to this and, and maybe agree, it's so cool to see some of these rising stars take it to some of our legends in the league. Shun taking TN to task. When would you have that on your bingo card? I mean, you look at the all-time head-to-head, Shun has actually had his number as well. Yeah. There are, the great and wonderful thing about LPL is that you can have legendary players from different eras all playing together now in the here and now. And some of them, even though they are potentially in the best roles of all time, have only loved one, like, one title or something. <laughs> yeah. no, we've got players on BLG which are, have never won a title. We've got Creamans in the mid lane for top esports in the mix as well. You get this wonderful blend of old and new and everyone fighting their hearts out. That place in history. And I love it because for two teams that have literally decided most of their season by 15 minutes into the game, we've had multiple long games in this series. And that's fantastic because it means that these, again, these old gods of each of their roles, the new blood, can decide it here in the now. Baron started. We've seen this before. Top esports, they want to burn it. They want to take it. Shun can't get in the pit. The Baron gone to Tien. They don't want to take the engage on the back end of it, but they need to start positioning out of this mid lane. Okay, top is whilst they claim back some vision. It's an important thing for them. I think BLG, after kind of committing towards the bot side of the map uh, for that dragon, they lost a little bit of control towards the top side. Again, top esports, very good with their macro, very good at getting that uh, ability to move across the map, particularly around these objectives. They have occasionally flummoxed BLG with that one. What can they do with this Baron, though? To be able to push in safely. And they have to do that over a lot of wards from the side of BLG as well. That'll give Shun some extra information yeah. to flank, give Bin a chance to potentially turn this Baron around on them. The thing I find interesting at this point in the game is there's a couple options for engage on the side of top esports. There's really only one big option for BLG and Shun. He has to kick it off. I think he's got a great angle, right? We've got hex gates. That helps you get behind enemy lanes. Yes, you're pushing in towards mid lane here. But look at a couple of these wards just around the place from BLG. Bin could potentially teleport in for an equalizer at the point. He doesn't have to. There's a chance there. Just watch out for that. Top esports, they are, however, getting some big territory gains across the map before BLG find their way to break this push. They will take the lead in gold. They will take a couple turrets. The tier twos giving a little bit more gold too in the side lanes. They're using this Baron well. They still have about two minutes, and it's a 3,000 Baron power play right now. Yes, and you know, that golden pocket has led to huge items coming in from the side of Top Esports. I mean, need we say more about this Draven? He's <laughs> almost at that full build, Jackie Love on screen. And it's Jackie Love's Draven, you this, know. Yeah, this is how he started it. You know, he was the Draven streamer. He went pro and said, okay, fine, I guess I'll win a world championship. Again, I'll model a little bit. No, <laughs> no big deal. If anybody doesn't know, he's a model. Or at least he was. <laughs> ah, I, I can see it. Uh, I can see it. But Jackie Love. Throws out a um, lot of those axes onto the wave. It means that Ben has to use that ultimate in return. Ben's going for this more tanky build on the Rumble, which means he can be a bit more obnoxious in that front line to try and survive with those axes. But see how easy that'll be. With the same top Esports with the Baron have managed to safely push him. That was the yeah. question. Could they push in, but safely? The answer is for now, yes. A minute left on the Baron. Oh, engage over here on oh, 369. They have so much damage here. The Morellos is there too to keep the healing down. 369 going to burn his flash over the wall. Meanwhile, another tier two goes down. So that's all outer turrets down for BLG. So nothing standing outside their base. Um, they've had some of their properties removed. Hmm. 
that. They should talk to somebody about that. They, they probably should. See if there was any planning permission for those demolitions, because it did feel like that wasn't part of the plan for BLG. This was poised to be, for most of this game, actually a pretty clean victory. It felt like after that yeah. early game, when Elf was so far ahead, surely that should be it. That's the great thing about, again, these players, though. They do not give up easily. And that's also something we've seen from BLG is without leads, even though they have lead, their late game decision making can sometimes feel like a chicken with their head cut off. And I think top esports would definitely want to take advantage of that. I think on the other side as well, I'd really just say top esports are very good at late game decisions. Yeah. On the whole, now we do have ourselves Soul potentially for top esports going. Oh, Soul misses. That's a big thing for BLG. What else that have is. they got to force this? They're losing mid lane priority. We don't have vision of Botside River. Top esports. They have the run of the map right now. Able to try to get that enchanted crystal arrow. Does go a bit wide. Mako wanting to find the right targets here, but the dragon is up. This is soul and a hex tech soul for top esports. Yeah, you do not want to give that one over, especially with someone like the Ash as well. It kind of gets that chain. Oh, it's going it's, over. It's going over <laughs> so quickly, though. It's soul, Baron in the last few minutes. Top esports are playing the objective game, and BLG are not getting clean fights. They can't get the damage down. It's going to be a couple ultis down. Enchanted crystal arrow still very far from going in. Now Shun is in there, but he gets his GA pop. Equalizer on top. The skies have descended, but can it change for BLG? It looks like top esports are fighting tooth and nail. They get on Spade's call. Meanwhile, Ben's forced out of the fight and they're flashing forward onto the bot lane of BLG. They'll find everybody except for Ben and they'll shove it right up the gut. This is not going to be a clean sweep. This will not be the easy road to a title. Top Esports let out a defiant shout and they will not go quietly into the night. The night is dark and full of terrors, but Top Esports will light the flame that lights the room. And they move on to the last two towers here. They have resurged the three world champions of the experience across the board. We got a series on our hands. What a late game between these two teams. For the most part of that, I, I thought it was going to be BLG running away with it. Once again, they <laughs> had themselves great leads and you know, Elk on the Varus. It felt like it was such a huge thing. Somehow, we have ourselves again another, you know, blue side victory important thing. No though. problem. Uh, you know, we did have that one red side from BLG just before this, but it's really important for Top Esports to say, look, we can take games here and now in this series. It really feels like we're starting to brew up something special now. Oh, it's going to be fun. I am hoping for five games, but it was more... There was no way that this was going to go 3-0. With the amount of experience, with the amount oh of power <laughs> on the other side, there was still something left in the tank, and I love to see it. We're going to send it away to a little break. We'll see the lounge on the other side.